trace magnetics. And uh, on Friday, I'm going to talk about optics and wave propagation. This is uh, this week's plan. So let me start from um, last week's uh, AC circuit. So uh, last week we'll talk about if we have uh, AC circuit and we have the alternating power source and connect with uh, inductor. And we know the inductance is L and the power source provides uh, a current. This current is uh, alternating function, sine function or cosine function, doesn't matter. Um, then this function has a frequency. The frequency here, I use omega to represent the frequency. And sometimes you will see uh, f. This two has uh, a ratio of two pi. So that means if we have uh, f and we want to convert to the omega, then that will be uh, equivalent to the uh, times two pi, then we got the omega. So two pi f is equal to omega. So that's the uh, same ratio, but they have a different number. So be careful. And also when we have the inductor, we can check the voltage across the inductor. So if we use a voltmeter to measure the voltage, and you will find that the voltage depends on the time derivative of the current. So this will be equal to L, the inductance, times the di over dt. So, and the current is a sine function. Then we do the derivative, we will get the cosine function and get the, the frequency out of the, the cosine function. We will have omega L cosine omega t. So this is the, uh, the voltage. And if we plug the voltage and the current in the same frame, this is V or I as a function of time. And the current, I can use uh, the red curve, that's a sine function, looks like this. And the uh, voltage is a cosine function. Sine function, so I have cosine function, this. And you will find that the voltage leads current. So we have the voltage leads current by a phase of half path. So this is the first conclusion, I think. This is different from the resistor. If we check resistor, we have the resistor and the resistance R. If the current is I non cosine omega t, then the voltage on the capacitor on the resistor will be I non times R cosine omega t. The so I and the V are in the are in phase. They have the same phase. They have the same phase. So in this case, we don't need to worry about uh, the phase. But for the inductor, we have to be careful. So if we draw a uh, current in the horizontal direction, this is I, then um, the voltage, I use the red curve. Uh, hold on. I use the red curve to represent that. Current. So this is the current. And for the voltage, the resistor, they have the same phase. So they're parallel. And if we check about the voltage on the inductor, there are half pi difference and the voltage leads the current. So I can use a vertical line to represent the voltage. This is a voltage on the Doctor, and they are 90 degree. We call this a phase diagram. And the voltage and the current are both phase vector. And we define counterclockwise is leading direction. So 
if we go to the counterclockwise, that means um, the voltage is leading the current. Okay. And let's check the ratio of the voltage to the, to the current. We will get a resistance dimension parameter. We check the magnitudes of the voltage on the inductor over the current on the inductor. And the magnitudes of the voltage will be here. And do I miss something? I miss the current here. The magnitude is I non omega L. And the magnitude for the current is I non. So I get omega L. This is called impedance. of the inductor. Or we have another name, reactance. And you can check this formula. That means if the omega is close to zero, that means the AC circuit uh, become a DC circuit, DC circuit. Then in this case, the impedance, impedance I use X to represent the impedance, the X turn to zero. Then we can say there's no impedance on the uh, inductor. Impedance actually is an effective resistance. So that means if we have a DC current, um, we can treat the inductor as a zero resistance resistor, as a zero resistor. So that means we can treat this as a wire. Treat the inductor as a wire. Because there's no resistance. Okay. But if the frequency turns very high as the AC circuit, then the impedance goes to infinity. Then in this case, the inductor could be treated as a huge resistor. Okay. So if we have a power source connect the inductor and the resistor in series, and we can check the total current. Since the current is I sine omega T, then you will find the voltage on this guy will be VL equals I omega L times sine omega T. But the voltage and the current are out of phase, so we have to plus half pi. Okay. This is the voltage on the inductor. But if we provide a constant uh, voltage, that means the voltage is AC voltage, but uh, the current can change. We want to know on the inductor and the resistor what's the voltage. So if we want to measure the voltage of the inductor and the voltage on the resistor, how can we get uh, the voltage? So let's calculate the current. The current actually is equivalent to the voltage, total voltage provided by the power source over the total impedance. Total impedance. And when we have inductor and the resistor connect in series, the total impedance should be calculated in this way. So we draw a vector of the resistor, the resistance in the horizontal direction, that's R, and the impedance for the inductor is in the vertical direction. And the degree in between is 90 degree. This is omega L, this is R. Then the diagonal, of this rectangular 
is the result of the total impedance. So we can use mass to get the total impedance is R squared plus omega L squared. That's the total impedance. So the current is equivalent to the total voltage here, is the total voltage divided by the total impedance. That's R squared plus omega L squared. And this is the magnitude of current. The current also has a different phase. And the phase angle is this one. I use theta to represent the angle. So the current eventually will be equivalent to the magnitude of the current times of uh, sine function. Sine function plus a phase. Difference. And here, the tangent theta is equivalent to this length over this length. So we have omega L over R. So this is the current inside this, uh, the circuit. Then to calculate the voltage for each one, we only need to calculate uh, the current times the impedance. So the voltage on the inductor will be equal to current times the impedance of the inductor. So that will be V0 omega L over square root R square plus omega L square, then times a sine function. And then we can check this ratio. This is the magnitude of the voltage on the inductor. And if I divide by the v on the left side, I normalize the voltage, I will get a profile of the uh, magnitude as a function of frequency. And you can check that if I take the magnitude of the voltage this is a normalized magnitude of voltage as a function of the frequency. And if we plug the normalized uh, frequency or the normalized voltage as a function of frequency, we call this plug as the spectrometer. And you can find that at a low frequency. When omega turns to zero, most of the um, voltage is equivalent to zero. You will find that this turns to zero because omega is on the denominator, uh, on the numerator. So this is turned to zero. And we can think about that for the low frequency. If we want to measure the voltage on the inductor, low frequency, we can treat this as a wire. So there's very low voltage on the wire. The most of the voltage is on the resistor. So that makes sense that at the low frequency, the voltage on the inductor is zero. At the high frequency, we see this guy, this guy over the uh, total voltage turn to number one, turn to one because we can treat this very small off as omega is very large. This turn to one. And in this case, most of the voltage provided by the power source will be on the inductor. That means at very high frequency, the resistance of the inductor is very large and there is very small uh, voltage on the resistor. Okay, so if we plot and the diagram, it will be look like this. High frequency is it number one, low frequency, the ratio is zero. So that means we can let the voltage of the inductor at high frequency, and we can remove the voltage on the inductor at low frequency. So we call this as a filter. And on the inductor, 
we let the high frequency um, equivalent, equivalent to one. That means this is high pass. We use high pass filter. So that means if I have a signal, the signal has two components, the voltage, and one component is a very low frequency envelope. And the second component is a high frequency fluctuation. So this is a signal. And I put this on the power source. This is our input and connect with a inductor and a resistor. And if we measure the voltage on the uh, inductor as our output, we will get a high frequency output. So if we use a voltmeter to measure the output, we will get output like this. It's the voltage on the inductor. And we remove uh, the low frequency envelope. So that means if we have a signal, the signal um, is, the frequency of the signal is very high. And because the ambient temperature change, there is some wobble. We can use the inductor to remove the wobble. This is called high pass filter. to remove the wobble. And I have a simulation to show you how does this work. Okay, so can you see the circuit? Um, I put a resistor here and a inductor. This is an inductor. And I have a input. The input has a signal one and a signal two. I call it noise, but actually sometimes this is not noise. We can show this is high frequency signal. High frequency signal. And the signal is low frequency signal. And then we can check the frequency. And this guy, the frequency has 10. Okay. And this guy, the frequency is large. 100, okay. and the amplitudes are similar. So that means if they are similar, these two signal entangle together. And if I just want to have the high signal, high frequency signal, I need to uh, use a one meter to measure the voltage of the inductor. So the voltage of the inductor will be a high frequency signal. I show you. Okay. So. Uh, let me run. Okay. If we check the power source, the power source here provides a low frequency envelope and a high frequency fluctuation. Actually, there are two sine functions. One sine function is high frequency, one sine function is low frequency, and they entangle together. And if we check the voltage of the, of the inductor, See, this is a flat. This is a flat fluctuation, and there's no wobble. So this is a very good filter to remove the low frequency signal. And uh, most of the case, if in the lab or in the uh, when we do the experiment, uh, there's a small frequency uh, signal from the vibration of the table or from the um, the vibration of the air then it will make the very small uh, wobble. And most of this wobble has a frequency lower than 20 Hertz. Um, but for the signal we want to get is megahertz or the gigahertz. So that's very high. So we can use a conductor to remove the wobble from the vibration of the table or the vibration of the air or any wave from the earth. So this is a good filter. We call this High pass filter. Okay. And this. And also, 
I could simulate the spectrometer of the voltage, and you will find that for the inductor, you can measure the voltage. And you can find that this is a voltage of the inductor normalized by over uh, uh, voltage from the power source. And the horizontal axis actually are the frequency from the low frequency to high frequency. And you can find that at the high frequency, uh, the voltage turn to um, saturate. And at the low frequency, it's zero. So this is a profile of the high pass filter. And the next uh, question I'm going to talk about is, can we have a low pass filter? That means we have the high voltage at low frequency and the low frequency at high, uh, low voltage at high frequency. Here, I have a circuit to show you. So we can replace and the inductor with a capacitor. If I have a capacitor and this is the resistor and I connect with them together. And same thing, if I connect the power source is provide a constant voltage or we we'll say this is a constant AC voltage with a constant amplitude, but this is a sine function. This is provided by the power source. And let's see. Uh, at the beginning, if there's no a resistor, and we only have the capacitor. Let's check the current inside the circuit. The current is equivalent to the capacitance times time derivative of the voltage. Right. This is uh, uh, how we get the current. And let's do the calculation. The current times the voltage will be, time derivative of the voltage will be uh, voltage times omega times cosine function. Okay, then let's check uh, the phase step. Hmm? If I plug the current and the voltage in the same frame, voltage or current, let's check the voltage first. Voltage is a sine function. It's a sine function. And the current is a cosine function. Okay, this is voltage, and the red line is a, is a current. So that means the voltage leads, hold on, get, oh, no, 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 I got it right. Uh, cosine function is current, sine function is voltage. Then we have current leads voltage by half pipe. Okay, so if we have a phase diagram, this is a current of the capacitor, then current leads the voltage the voltage should lag current. The voltage goes down. And because I say uh, counterclockwise, that's the leading direction. So the voltage should be goes down and with a 90 degree. And if I um, do the ratio of the voltage of the capacitor magnitude over the magnitude of current of the capacitor, that will be that will be voltage. Voltage is V num, and the current. Let's see, current is here. This one C omega V num. So I got to reach one over C omega. 
Okay, this is interesting because if I decrease the frequency and the frequency turns to zero, AC turns to DC, then this is impedance of the capacitor. The capacitor has a very large impedance at a low frequency. That means we can treat the capacitor as no connection. Okay. There's no current because the impedance is too large. But when the frequency goes to infinity, a very large frequency, then the capacitor could be treated as a wire, no impedance. So that means if I connect the capacitor with the resistor, oh, the resistor, at the high frequency, this guy could be treated as a wire. So most of the voltage will be on the resistor. This guy turns to a wire. So the voltage of the resistor will be equivalent to the voltage of the power source. But at the low frequency, this guy treated as no connection. So most of the voltage will be on the uh, capacitor. And the voltage on the resistor is equal to zero. Okay, the same thing. Let's calculate the current. The current is equivalent to the total voltage over the impedance, total impedance, times a sine function, omega t plus a phase difference. Okay, then total dif uh, total impedance. Let's see, the resistor has a horizontal direction. They are in the same phase, is R, and the impedance of the capacitor goes down because uh, the current uh, leading the, the voltage. So I have this guy goes down, and I use the diagram, the diagonal of the, tri of the rectangular, that will be the square root R square, one over omega C square. This is impedance, total impedance, with uh, capacitor and the inductor, capacitor and the resistor connected in series. And the phase here, tangent theta is equivalent to the one over omega C over R. This is a tangent theta, because uh, the theta goes down, so I have to use negative sign. Okay. So this is a formula of the current. And let's check the voltage on the capacitor. That will be equivalent to the current times the impedance of the capacitor. Uh, Joe? Yeah. Just really quick, I'm just a little confused by that theta. Is that just coming from your knowledge of that the current leads the voltage by pi over two or? No. Um, okay. If the current leads by half two, uh, the pi, uh, half pi, and this is only the case, there's no, there's no resistor. If there's no resistor, the current leads half pi. But if there is a resistor, it's not half pi. It will be some angle. This angle should be calculated by this formula. Okay, it's just whatever the kind of ratio between the resistance and like the omega, one over omega C of the capacitor. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. And then when we calculate the voltage, we use the current times the capacitance, uh, calculate it. Uh, times impedance, then uh, if we check the uh, 
magnitude, we have magnitude, then I have, uh, let me see, Vnum is magnitude over the impedance, total impedance, that's uh, R, 1 over omega C squared, and times 1 over omega C. Okay. Then let's see, when omega reach to 0, what will happen? If they reach to 0, and we can find that most of the case, um, this is very large. This is also very large. So that means the R could be uh, treated nothing. Then in this case, if I over, I divide by the Vnum to the left part, I have Vnum, Vc over Vnum, so Vc over Vnum will be equivalent to this guy over square root 1 over omega c square. Because at uh, omega equivalent to zero, these two are very large, so we can treat R as nothing. That this is equivalent to one. But at a high frequency, um, one over omega c is treated to zero. So that means the Vc over V now turn to zero. If we plot the spectrometer, frequency uh, normalize the voltage of the capacitor. That will be high, at low frequency, the voltage is very high, at high frequency, the voltage is very low. So this is called low pass filter. Okay, let me show you the simulation. First, I'm going to change the inductor at the capacitor, and I don't change the signal. So for the signal, we have both uh, high frequency fluctuation and the low frequency envelope. And let me run the simulation. Okay. So when we check the signal, uh, we have both. But if we check the voltage on the capacitor, we compress the fluctuation and the envelope doesn't change. So that means we leave the wobble and we roll out the fluctuation. This application is called the uh, low frequency uh, filter or low pass filter. So that means if we have some white noise um, made by the machine or the if you go to the gym and you have a headset, you want to talk with somebody, but you don't want to listen to the, the noise made by the running machine, you need a filter. So in your headset, there is a noise cancellation. Most of the noise made by the machine has a very big frequency, maybe a thousand of hertz or tens of thousand hertz. But um, when people talk, the frequency from our throat um, is around several hundred to 1000 Hertz. So that's a low frequency. So we can use a capacitor to keep the people's talking and remove the noise from the running machine. So this is the application of the noise cancellation. So the, the principle is easy. We just connect the capacitor and the, the capacitor's voltage is on output. The input is the ambient the voice, and the output is the voltage of the capacitor. So this is called a low frequency filter. And if we check the profile of the frequency, let's see. You see, this is a normalized voltage of the capacitor as a function of the frequency. At low frequency, the voltage is high. And at low high frequency, the voltage is low. So this is uh, usually we do. And another thing I want to talk today is called the bandpass filter. The 
the band pass filter is uh, is easy if you check that if we have uh, a frequency profile this is normalized voltage and I want the filter block the low frequency signal and the high frequency signal I only want a window to let a range of signal pass we call this filter as band pass To get a band pass filter, we need to connect three elements in series, inductor, capacitor, and the resistor. And we can find that if we make the power source as our input, and we measure the voltage of the resistor as our output, we can find that at low frequency, And the capacitance has a very large impedance. So that means most of the voltage will on the capacitor. So the voltage on the resistor is low. At a high frequency, the inductor has a very large impedance. So most of the voltage will be on the inductor. So in this case, the voltage on the resistor is low. Only in between, we have a voltage on the, on the inductor, of the, on, on the resistor. So in this case, I will have a total impedance is equivalent to the R square plus Omega L, this is the uh, impedance of the inductor minus the impedance of the capacitor. They are out of phase and the degree is 180 degrees. So I can minus them, I do the ratio, it's a total impedance. Then the total voltage is our input voltage. So this is the uh, voltage on the, uh, this is the current in the circuit. And the voltage on the resistor will be this guy multiplied by the resistance. So this is voltage on the resistor. And in this case, you will find that um, the voltage profile has a function of frequency is a band pass filter. And I can show you the simulation. So if we measure the voltage on the resistor and, and normalize this voltage, then we will have a low frequency and a high frequency. They have low voltage, but only in between, I have a very large frequency, uh, I have very large voltage. And also I can um, make the um, two side has a high voltage and in between I have low voltage. We call this band block filter. If I have a band block filter, I can measure the voltage on the capacitor and the inductor, then I will uh, flip this curve. Let's see? Let's see? If I measure the voltage of the capacitor and the inductor both, then I have a band block. That means um, the voltage is high on the both sides, but in between, there's no voltage. So this is a uh, very interesting application. That means if I want to block a range of the frequency, then I can use this uh, circuit. And also if I want to have a window to let a frequency pass, I can make a, a band gap or any band pass filter. So this is a, a simple circuit to make a filter. Okay. So I think this is what I'm going to do today. I will talk about the um, impedance, we we'll talk about the, uh, uh, the phase difference and also the filter and the sound application. And I think you find this useful. And if you are electrical engineering students, this is very important because we are going to use this one to do some signal analysis 
or to make some circuits to uh, build a calculator. So they are very important and this is uh, an idea. How can we make a circuit to field out some signal we don't want? Okay, so um, do you have other questions? If you don't have a question, I think we're done today and I will see you on Friday.